The word computer was in use from the early 17th century. Originally, a computer was a job, a person who performed calculations. The first programmable computer was invented by Charles Babbage in 1822, called the Difference Engine, which was designed to tabulate polynomial functions. Charles would go on to design many more computers before his death in 1871. Sadly, he was never able to complete construction of his machines due to conflicts with his chief engineer and inadequate funding. One of these was the Babbage's analytical engine, first described in 1837 as the successor to the difference engine. The design used an arithmetic logic unit, if-else, loops, and integrated memory, making it the first design for a general-purpose, Turing-complete, computer. Ada Lovelace is often credited as the first computer programmer, she worked closely with Charles and was the first to recognize that the machine had applications outside of calculation. She wrote the first published computer program for use to compute Bernoulli numbers. Another influential figure in this field was Alan Turing, known for his decryption of the cipher used in the Enigma machine, helping the Allies to defeat the Axis powers and win World War II. He also wrote Turing's proof proving that there are some mathematical problems that can never be solved with computers. He came up with the concept of a Turing machine, the Turing test, a way of testing the ability of a computer to exhibit intelligent behavior, and more. However, it wasn't until the mid-20th century that the first true programming languages were developed. The first one we will be looking at is Fortran. Fortran was originally developed by IBM in the 1950s, made as a more practical alternative to assembly. Fortran got its name from formula translation and dominated scientific computing. It is popular for high-performance computing and has been in use for decades in areas such as weather, fluid dynamics, geophysics, and more. The Fortran syntax seems very alien compared to modern dynamic languages like Python and R. You have to explicitly start and end the program and optionally give it a name. Then you, usually, write implicit none, as without it, by default. All variables starting with i, j, k, l, n, and m are assumed to be integers and the others real arguments. Variables are typically declared at the top of the program, with integer for whole numbers, real for non-integer numbers, and logical for Boolean values. You declare strings with the character keyword, but have to define the length in characters. Although it's worth noting that modern Fortran also supports concise and flexible variable declarations. The syntax for if statements is quite similar to that of VBA, as you have to write then and end if. Fortran uses read to get input from the keyboard and write to print to the screen. It's mainly designed for mathematical operations and has many built-in functions for this, like add, subtract, multiply, divide, and square root, as well as an extensive library of functions and routines for more complex calculations. This is one of its main strengths in scientific computing. Fortran is known for its array operations or the ability to perform operations on entire arrays at once without needing to use a loop. These are highly efficient and useful for scientific computing and working with large data sets. Another popular feature is its native parallel computing capabilities. Parallel computing, which is a method of computing tasks by breaking them down into smaller chunks that can be processed simultaneously on different units, significantly improving performance. Fortran 2003 and later introduced modern programming features such as object-oriented programming, based on the concepts of objects that can contain data and code. Modern Fortran also has good interoperability with other programming languages, making it easier to integrate Fortran code with C, C++, and others. Fortran's influence in the history of programming has been substantial, indirectly inspiring the development of later languages such as BASIC and C. It is being updated to this day, with the latest stable release, at time of recording, being in 2018. It's used by almost 1% of developers, according to the 2023 Stack Overflow Developer Survey. And due to its use in scientific computing and legacy systems, it's not going anywhere. In the late 1950s, programming was obscenely expensive. A survey found that with a data processing installation, the programming alone cost $800,000 on average. Someone had to do something. It was getting out of hand. 
Luckily, it also found that, thank God, if a business-oriented language were used, it would be much cheaper and faster. Hooray! On the 8th of April, 1959, Mary Hawes called a meeting to organize a formal discussion on common business languages. The group asked the Department of Defense to sponsor the creation of what would become COBOL. They agreed. Grace Hopper is often referred to as the mother of COBOL, and for good reason. She served as a technical consultant to the committee that decided on the creation of COBOL. COBOL was even based on her language, Flowmatic, extending it with ideas from the IBM equivalent, Comoran. Not only did Flowmatic shape the development of COBOL, it was also the first English-like data processing language. A COBOL program is structured into four essential divisions, each serving a specific purpose in organizing the code. The first and only mandatory division is the identification division, used by the compiler and readers to identify the program. You must set a program ID, providing a name for your COBOL program. The next division is the environment division, where you specify information about the system on which the program was compiled and the system on which it will be executed. Additionally, it allows you to define external data sets and files used by the program. This provides the necessary context for the program's environment. After that, the data division, arguably one of the most crucial sections of a COBOL program. In this division, you describe the data structures used by the program, including the layout and characteristics of data files, working storage variables, and records. COBOL's strength lies in its ability to handle vast amounts of data, making the data division integral to handling large-scale business processes. Finally, we have the Procedure Division, which contains the actual logic of the COBOL program. Here, you'll write the logic for the program, such as calculations, input-output operations, and if-else statements. You can use statements, including display to print output to the screen, or if, else, and end if to make decisions. COBOL is, to this day, a very commonly used language, with 0.66% of respondents to the developer survey saying they used it. With the sheer quantity of COBOL legacy code still in use, it doesn't look like COBOL is going anywhere anytime soon. BASIC, or Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, is a family of general-purpose, high-level programming languages designed for ease of use. It was created in 1963 by Thomas Kurtz and John Kemeny at Dartmouth College with the goal of enabling non-scientific students to use computers. At the time, nearly all computers needed custom software, which only professionals tended to learn. Existing languages were too tricky. For example, Fortran had an almost impossible to memorize convention for specifying a loop. Kemeny and Kurtz agreed that it was very important for students outside STEM fields to be able to write code. Their vision was for every student to be able to access a computer, and any staff should be able to use a computer in the classroom. Another problem with existing computing was a lack of immediate feedback. Computers used batch processing, where programs are run in batches at scheduled times. This meant that people had to wait a long time to see the output, and if their code contained any bugs. Luckily, John McCarthy had the solution, time sharing. The concept of time sharing is claimed to have been authored by Robert Dodds in 1949, but the term wasn't used until 1958 by Bob Beamer. Time sharing is where a machine divides its processing time between all the users, making it behave more like everyone having a slower computer to themselves. This meant that small scripts could run in just a few seconds, a massive step up from batch processing. The first version of BASIC was written by Kemeny. It was heavily inspired by Fortran 2. Many commands were similar or identical to Fortran. However, the syntax was changed wherever they thought it could be improved. For example, the impossible to memorize loop was changed to be easier to remember. This and many more changes helped make BASIC much easier while still resembling Fortran. The project was given a $300,000 grant by the National Science Foundation. The money went towards buying a computer for processing and a real-time processor to handle the teleprinters used for input and output. A dozen undergrads worked on it for about a year. 
Writing the DTSS system and the compiler, the first version was officially released in May 1964. The usage at Dartmouth increased rapidly, with the CPU needing to be replaced twice. By 1970, there were hundreds of people connected to said computers, some remotely. The designers, wanting more people to adopt the language, made it completely free. They put a lot of effort into promoting the language, and BASIC would go on to be hugely popular and inspire Visual BASIC. Usually, a script will start with CLS or clear screen. This will simply remove all other text from the command prompt, leaving you with a blank slate for your script to execute, and scripts are stopped with the end command. You can print to the screen with print and concatenate strings with a semicolon. You add comments with the rem or remark command. You get input with input and store the result in a variable like so. In BASIC, there are numerous variable types, but the two main ones are numbers and strings. You declare a string with name dollar sign and a number with name percent. The go to command works as you would expect, just going to that line and continuing on from there. For example, we could make an infinite loop by writing this. You can also jump to a line by using its label. You can label a line and go to it like such. This would also run in an infinite loop. You could alternatively use the go sub command, which works more like a function. After line 30 has been run, it will return to the line after the go sub, meaning that this wouldn't run in a loop.